if you've seen my earlier videos you'll know that this uh, uh, particular wheel I cut by hand and uh, I've just replaced it with uh, another wheel that I've cut by hand and uh, what I've done is actually soldered a, uh, a washer onto the original uh, gear after first removing all the teeth and um, I've cut it again I've got a little uh, dividing head uh, that I've used but uh, I haven't got a, a proper gear cutting set up uh, so I'll just show you uh, what I uh, used this is the gear that I originally cut the two second uh, uh, per tooth gear and um, it because they're a little uneven uh, I, it worked perfectly satisfactorily but um, I, uh, I'm going to strip all the teeth off it and um, make a, a, another attempt at this gear. I hope I don't mess it up as I haven't got a spare arbor. Um, so uh, anyway, yeah, here we go. Here I've stripped the teeth off and now I'm going to solder the wheel to a brass washer using a soldering iron. But I have to be careful not to melt the soft alloy shaft as it's a low melting point material. I marked off the 30 teeth with the dividing head. I was going to file the teeth in by hand but I decided to lash up my little grinding wheel and use that instead. Obviously it took several passes to get it right and uh, I did set myself up with a depth gauge um, just so as I could get the, uh, the teeth looking something like right. This is my uh, little dividing head um, but it only works um, on uh, whole degrees so uh, it's nothing uh, exotic. Uh, a little uh, three jaw chock and then um, uh, 36 uh, holes for the 360 degrees so they're 10 degrees apart and then there's this vernier arrangement which goes from uh, 0 to 9 and then uh, on the back of uh, this wheel um, uh, there's graduation there uh, so that's zero and then the next one is ten. Uh, the the mark is between the four and the five there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, so ten, twenty, and then the uh, uh, the digits if you like, the uh, if that's zero so that little peg goes through to that hole and then if I want to move one degree then that comes out goes into the number one it advances a little bit about one degree <laughs> and then try and do this here. that goes in and that's locked it at um, at one degree Let's get in there. so that between the four and the five you can see the number so then uh, two degrees we go in there and we just edge that along that goes in that's two etc so I'm sure you get the idea and you can get round to 360 degrees and fortunately uh, this little wheel needed uh, 30 teeth and uh, I'm not driving the clock by the way at the moment it uh, hasn't got the mechanism on it uh, it's at 30 teeth so that's 12 degrees apart so I was able to use this and uh, okay so I've got the uh, dividing head uh, clamped to the bench it's a very substantial bench this it's two inch thick uh, planks all the way underneath uh, there and uh, very well supported then uh, I've got a little um, uh, uh, 
grinding tool there. Uh, it's not a Dremel, but people probably know a Dremel. And I've got a little disc in there, and I've cut the disc uh, down to size just so as I could get in. So I had my gear in the uh, chuck of the dividing head, and I've gone round in 12 degrees there, and I've just sort of swung that in and out in the appropriate place. Um, that's not marks on the uh, chuck you can see there, that's just the dust um, from where I was working. Um, and uh, I've bent uh, the, oh, this is fixed on an old gate hinge um, that's mounted in a vise that's held down with lumps of metal. That's uh, a bit of old uh, railway track. I had a, an application uh, hardening the surface of railway tracks and uh, that's uh, really very useful. So bits of metal holding the vice down so that won't go anywhere. Um, then I bent the hinge just to get the angle that I wanted. I started off with it straight when I was doing the uh, the first cut on the gears and then to, to get the, um, the chamfered edge so I just bent that. And it's got nothing to do with clock making, it's bodging. All I'm doing is using what I've got to do what I want to do. Um, and I'm bodging it together and it's, it's perfectly adequate for what I want. You'll remember, if you've seen the earlier videos, the little gear I originally cut by hand, it was perfectly adequate. But because I've got this dividing head, I thought I'd just make use of it and have a little play. Um, so that's what that's all about. I said I cut the uh, the disc down because of the way I was holding the gear. The wheel itself was actually quite close to the jaws, and the um, the full size grinding stone would have um, cut into my uh, jaws. So I've nibbled round the edge with a pair of wire cutters, and then uh, used uh, a uh, an abrasive stone. To, uh, to grind the wheel down to get it so as it's uh, uh, concentric and the size I want and uh, that's allowed me to uh, do what I wanted to do. So that's the size of this uh, little abrasive wheel started out and I say I've, uh, I've cut it down to, uh, to that. Um, so uh, again I think that the point I want to make is don't let things get in the way um, you know you can make things happen if you think about it okay I hope you found that interesting uh, next time I'll show you my homemade uh, electromagnet that uh, I'm planning to use for the clock I uh, wanted to, something that looked a little bit old-fashioned and uh, this is what I've come up with and it's uh, reasonably powerful.